we've all been new at one time or another. So there's no need to get all judgy about some of the mistakes new techs make just because they're inexperienced. However, there are some very preventable mistakes that occur due to simple oversight and carelessness that need to happen exactly 0% of the time. The first is caps and seals being left out or off. Leaving caps off is never okay. While it's true that Schrader valves and backseating service valves should seal completely and shouldn't be left leaking, it's always possible that a little leakage can happen at the port. Besides, keeping bugs and dirt out of the ports is reason enough to keep the caps on. Bill Johnson, the original co-author of Racked, made a really good point on a recent podcast. When a system is apparently low, which you can verify through non-invasive temperature tests, for example, suction line temperature, you shouldn't just pull off the caps and attach the gauges right away. First, look for oil at the ports and leak check the ports to eliminate port leaks as a possible cause. Once you remove the caps and attach your manifold or probes, you won't be able to know if the ports were a leak point or not. Every time I remove caps, I look inside them to make sure the seals are in place, unless it's a flare hex cap that doesn't require a seal, like in a train. It's a good practice to keep all caps and screws together and in the same place on every call. This helps to ensure they don't get accidentally knocked into the dirt, lost, or forgotten. Put those caps back on finger tight for caps with seals and snug down with a 916 wrench for hex flare caps. The next is leaving disconnects out or off. It drives us crazy as senior technicians. Obviously, nobody tries to forget the disconnect, but it still happens all the time, and it's almost always because the tech gets in a hurry or distracted, and usually both. And it can be eliminated easily by some best practices. Most often, the disconnect is left off or out during maintenance or during very simple repairs. This is because the tech will often run test the equipment, then perform the maintenance or minor repair and leave without run testing again. This order of test of clean then repair isn't my favorite for several reasons, with silly mistakes being one of them. I advocate for performing the comprehensive run test at the very end of the repair or maintenance, meaning you're observing the system running right before you leave with the last action being resetting the thermostat or controls back to the desired set point. When you run test last, you don't forget silly things that prevent the system from running. Always do a final walk of the job before leaving and check disconnects, set points, then clean up and check for tools. The next area is poor electrical connections. I see it all the time. Somebody tested the capacitor and left the spade connections loose, or the contactor lugs not properly torqued, or the strands have come off of one of the crimp connections. The list goes on and on. Here are a few of the top mistakes to avoid. When forcing on a female spade on a capacitor, for example, it should be very snug. If it's loose at all, pull it off and pinch down the spade sides a bit to ensure there's a snug fit. When making a crimp connection, only do so on a stranded wire and use an appropriately sized connector. Position the jaw so that the indent crimp is made on the side of the connector opposite the split and the barrel. Even better is to use a crimper specifically designed for insulated terminals that compresses the entire barrel. I prefer to use ratcheting crimpers. Never cut strands of wire to make a conductor fit under a lug. Use the proper connector termination type for the conductor and it has to be the right size. Never leave it exposed wire. Strip back insulation only to the length required to make the connection and no more. Don't leave connections under tension, meaning where they want to pull off. Use straps and zip ties to keep the tension away from connections so that they aren't left under a pulling or disconnecting force. Make appropriate connections for the job. Never leave the connections open to the environment unless they're rated for it. When making any electrical connection, always pull the connection to make sure it's a snug fit before walking away. This is true of spade connectors or wire nuts or any type of connection you make. Always make sure that they don't pull apart easily. Finally, many new technicians fail to see the obvious. So much is made of good workmanship, which is how things look, and diagnosis, which is figuring out what's wrong, and rightfully so. However, for a new tech, nobody expects you to do the best looking work out there or to diagnose the super difficult situation the first time. You're expected to use common sense and spot things that are out of the ordinary or they can lead to issues. Here's a quick list of things to look out for that you can see with little to no experience. Look for refrigerant oil stains. Often oil stains or residue can lead you straight to a refrigerant leak. Then you pull out your soap bubbles to confirm. 
Use a mirror and a flashlight to look for dirty evaporator coils and blower wheels. You may make a diagnosis, but you leave the system with a dirty coil or a blower wheel, so you still look silly. You don't want a senior technician to come out to replace a part and find that the system was left dirty. Check the air filter and let the customer know you checked it. A home or business owner may not know much about HVAC, but they know what an air filter is, and reporting the condition back helps give them confidence. You wouldn't want to leave and then later have them find out that that, that, that filter is still dirty. Watch for rub outs on copper lines, feeder tubes, external equalizers, sensing bulbs, and wires. You can often find or prevent a problem just by looking for areas of contact between tubes and or wires. Inspect control wiring or thermostat wires for cuts or UV damage outside. If the weed whacker doesn't get the wire off, then the sun will. Look for past workmanship that may be done incorrectly. Just because that fan motor or capacitor is new doesn't mean it's the right size and wired properly. Always double check your own work as well as work done by others. And when in doubt, confirm with the manual. Before making a repair, double check the previous diagnosis, and no matter who it was made by, and check that the part you have is actually the correct part before pulling the part out of the packaging. There's nothing worse than removing a compressor to find out the one you have isn't the correct one. It's also worse to actually install it and then find out it's not the correct one. Always double check the diagnosis and the part. There are many other things that could be added to the list, but for a new tech, if you do the following, you will be on the road to success even if you're green. First, read product manuals and never stop learning. Use your resources to learn when you show up on a job, before and after. Listen carefully to senior techs and ask lots of questions. Help other techs when they're in a pinch. Smile and treat customers with respect, even if they don't treat you with respect. Compete with yourself to do each job a little better than the last. Walk every job before you leave to make sure everything is buttoned up. That includes things like screws, caps, disconnects, anything that you could have missed. Ask the customer if you've done everything to their satisfaction if, and if there is anything you can improve. Many times they'll tell you. Do all the little things with exceptional detail. Cleaning drains, washing condensers, etc. Always do it with a level of detail that exceeds your peers and you will build a reputation for excellence. If you do these things, your coworkers, customers, and managers will generally overlook the little mistakes you make just because you're green. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.